Hello and welcome back everyone, Tone here, ready to play some more Unexplored 2, The Wayfarer's Legacy. I'm excited about this particular episode because we are approaching a, it seems like an important location that I've been looking forward to for a long time, something I've never seen before. It's been uh, added to the game since the last time I made it this far in a run, so uh, very exciting. But first... Uh, we have a new update, yet another one. Um, this one is pretty neat. Uh, basically, it adds a save and reload feature, which is uh, antithetical to most roguelikes um, for good reason. But because Unexplored 2 um, is often played as a more of like a long form RPG experience. It just gives you the player the option to play the game more like that if they want to. Um, if you're pretty far into a run and you're having like a good like journey, a nice like narrative experience, something you're just having a lot of fun with that, and like one mistake happens, or even as this game has puts it, or this uh, update text puts it to have like a benevolent GM for maybe scenarios that weren't quite fair for some reason, which can happen in like a procedural game. Uh, with short runs, like you just kind of like laugh at that stuff and move on. Um, in a longer game, it can feel a little worse. So, you know, you don't have to play with this if you don't want to, but if you lose, you can reload or you can reload at any point, I guess, uh, to the last point where you saved at a safe location. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, I could see myself even using that if we're doing a certain type of uh, narrative-focused playthrough. Uh, it's not the way I normally play games, but Unexplored 2 isn't your typical roguelike, and I think this is a great feature. Uh, you don't like people can turn it off if they want, but I, I'm definitely a proponent of letting players play the game the way that they want to play. And I could see this as being a way that a lot of people would like to play this game. Uh, Caves of Cud uh, is a game, a roguelike, that does the same thing, and I feel like Caves of Cud has similar narrative-focused, long-form play for some players. Um, and it's not a coincidence that both of these games have decided to have the same feature. This is a pretty cool update. Uh, not something that we're going to be using or running into in this game, uh, our playthrough here, but I think it's an excellent addition for the game overall. Anyways, let's get into our current game. I'll give my usual plug here. If you'd like to support this channel and my other work, you can do so over at patreon.com slash tonehack. So feel free to check that one out. And God, this game, <laughs> even after so long, it's so beautiful. Gets me every time. All right, so we are currently at... Well, this is an underground shrine with an imperial force. But what we know about this location from rumors is that an imperial creature named Valker has made their camp in an underground shrine. So Valker is... I, I think we're going to have, like, a, a fight here. I mean, maybe not, because this game is, like, so, like, not combat-focused. Yo, we got some spark. I missed that before. I bet you that respawn. That's pretty cool. We have a lot of spark now. I feel so much better than we didn't have when we, like... <laughs> I basically blew all my spark on a, a lockpick test. Um, I feel more confident for closing out the game with this much spark. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what is here, but this feels like a big deal. And uh, it gets us closer to some stuff like related to the Imperium, which still feels like a kind of um, like enigmatic force in this world. Like we went to their their home base, like we read books about them um, in game books and like we know a little bit about them, but they still feel like very cryptic. They have these weird uh, uh, like teleporter tunnel-y things that like can kind of link different parts of the world map through through whatever magic they use. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll you know get to widen like deepen our information like our knowledge of the Imperium through this, which I'm excited about. Um, and it might be some kind of climactic like cool event as well. I don't want to hype it up too much, but 
Uh, I'm excited about this. Oh, did, how did these... Oh, snap. We've already got some Imperial stuff going on. Blocking our, uh... Our path there. Wonder how big this cave is gonna be. Yo, we got Eclipse's Libation. Oh. Yo, that was sneaky. We got slimed. And then we got rocked fault on us, and slimed means I was slower. You know what would be cool is if those things came up after we crossed a place to prevent us from going back the way that we came. I don't know if that'll happen, but I think that would be really cool. I like all the spark here. It's interesting that there's so much spark here because... It's kind of like a sign of like the the spirit plane, which kind of feels like the opposite of whatever the Imperials got going on. Now maybe they chose this because it had a big spirit world presence. Is that is that a person's uh Hmm. There might be human or intelligent life over there. Mine's eye filter. This is feeling like another part of the world where, like, if you go, you can get some good loot. Like, even if you don't want to go to whatever the end is. But those are some, like, nice potions we're finding. This, this is feeling like a big area, so I'm going to explore it a little carefully and meticulously. Assume all of these are empty because we found the one that had items in it there. Uh, and I can actually just walk around this. It's a little less exciting. This is looking like a dead end. We are seeing ruin type walls over there. Must be where the shrine proper is underground in this cave. go up here and over here are the places we haven't been. We have a downstair here. Oh, one of those things. Oh. Sorry, spiders. Oh, I still can't get through. Need to walk around this way. So that kind of portal, I think, shot bolts at us that... Reduce our hope. We got a layered garment. Crude. We don't really care about stuff like that right now, especially if it's crude to begin with. Let's see what this thing does. Infiltrator. We're not wanted here. Oh, shoot. Hang on. What kind of weapon am I using right now? We have this sword. I'm gonna pull out the, the rod and just... Oh, it's immune. Oh. Do a big hit there. Uh-oh. We got pulled into the edge. This is like the spirit world for the Imperium. I wouldn't be surprised if we had to fight Valkyr in the edge. However that works. Rift Shard Subcore. This con construction is a subcore associated with a Rift Shard. If you, you can channel enough power through the staff, you might be able to destroy it. But to do so, you need to be awakened. That's usually how these areas work, from my experience. Is you get awakened by, like, defeating an enemy or doing something else. Ooh. This guy is heavily armored. Did you drop? 
drop. Wait, defeated Valkyr? <laughs> that was him? Oh, that was a little anticlimactic. <laughs> I mean, that was one tough dude. So I thought that was kind of crazy. That was like a normal dude, but I wanted to like buff up for Valkyr. <laughs> I guess it makes sense that you'd fight them in the in the edge here. Uh, that is that's funny. That was. I mean, we weren't threatened that much just because we're like so geared up by the stage of the game. That guy was clearly um, difficult. Uh, difficult fight like a very challenging fight in general because um, we were doing like two damage to them on our normal attacks so their armor was blocking like eight damage base um, or not base it was doing like one damage base you know three damage base and an additional five when they rolled the heavy armor hit how this works is like light armor um, just reduces damage flat and then heavy armor is like a like a chance to reduce damage by like, you know, 60-70%. That's probably what was going on there. Um, so that was definitely a tough fight, but um, we did it without too much trouble. I mean, we are like really, really, really strong at this point in the game. So <laughs> Valkyr defeated. Didn't even realize it was him. Should have known. Uh, and what did we get for our, or what did he drop here? The Oblivion's Edge. This massive falx is a per, is permanently cold to the touch. It resonates dark energy, making it a very powerful, but also a dangerous weapon to use. Tainted. Every time you hurt a living creature with this weapon, you suffer minus three hope and one strain. What? That is insane. If you kill something with it, gain the awakened and the miserable conditions. It's indestructible. Cannot be destroyed. Holy cow. 20 damage normal attack. Cannot be parried. Disable shield. And 30 damage power attack. Unwieldy. Drop weapon when stunned, wounded, or exposed. Encumbrance 4. That is a ton of damage. I can see why you would uh, give up that hope to use it. This is, you treat this a little bit more like a consumable than a weapon that you use all the time. That is insane. I actually want to take that with us for the rest of the run. I just don't know how we make room for something with four encumbrance. How encumbered are we? I think by five levels now. Hmm. We're going to get rid of a sword. And then this weapon grip will transfer to this. So we'd free up like two of five slots by doing that. I could ditch like a staff here. We'll take this with us for now. But yeah, I don't know how we're going to... I want to, like, keep that with us. That thing looks sweet. Um, oh, what is this? We got the Arcane Seeker. A black and gold wedge, when touched, doesn't seem to feel like anything. A rudimentary intelligence, which is constantly shifting their gaze, can be felt inside. A deployable seeker. When thrown to on the ground, it stays for a short while. When it detects a hostile, it dashes in their direction. Uh, interesting. Are we able to pick it up again, or is this a one-time use? That's pretty cool. It sounds like it throws out like a little sentry or something. Um, I wanted to take a look at our conditions here. Awaken is the big one. The Staff of Yendor can destroy certain Imperial constructs. Look at this known. The local Imperials know you are the Wayfarer. They look for you. They hate you. They will kill you if they can. Yeah, our presence just got maxed out. Ooh, we get to learn a skill. We accomplish some kind of uh, deed. Valorous Epic for defeating Valkyr. Heck yeah, been a while since we've seen that. I hope we get a cool skill. Well, overall, that was really sick.
Stepping through this portal will take you back to the place where you entered this realm. Okay, well there's cl clearly more here. It was interesting that Valkyr ended up being like at the front. Oh, see, this thing just made us lose hope. We're losing a lot of hope from this thing. Um, Arcane Rift. Tendrils of black and gold come creeping out of a crevice in the earth, turning everything they touch into unrecognizable blackened shapes. Faintly familiar feelings of disgust bubble up from your mind, along with an almost primal urge to close it and protect life from whatever it is that these tendrils are made of. The rift is a portal that allows Imperial minions and influence to travel to this location from somewhere else. You can try to close it, or force your way through and try to destroy this portal at its origin. Um, I don't really want to find the origin here, so I'm just going to try and close the rift here, locally. Mostly because I just want to ex finish exploring this place. And we ended up not having too much trouble with that. Now both of our swords are damaged. Um, I should build a camp here. There's a little save icon on there, that means this is a safe place to save. Oh, that stuff is disappearing. I wonder if I just cleanse this place. Of, uh, of the Imperium. I want to learn our skill. A valorous deed has been performed. Learn a new skill or gain a benefit. We can get Intimidation, plus one redraws on applicable social fortune tests. Throwing technique, plus one with throwing or damage with throwing weapons. And Piercing Strike. Penetrate armor with power attacks of certain weapons. This should really tell us what the weapons are. I'm I'm gonna like see if I can make a suggestion on that on the on the official Discord because I think there's an ideas channel. Because uh, we want like full information for making decisions like this, and since skills are kind of like outside of like the early game, they become kind of rare, and you do kind of spec into specific weapons in this game. It, it feels bad to take a skill that might not do anything. Um, with that said, I'm gonna take this just in case it does do something. Hopefully, it works with swords. Piercing swords can pierce, right? Maybe it's just a javelin, like a, or a spear thing. Um, I'm not gonna do anything else here for now. I don't see any reason to. Where's that piercing strike? It is showing a spear here. I have a feeling that we we don't it doesn't work for our sword, but we'll, I guess we'll find out. I wonder if it would say here under the power attack or not. We'll have to pick up, uh, pick up a spear and see if it does does so. Um, okay, so we need some stuff to get through there, and this is back where we came from. So let's check in here first. So we have one gate where we need two. Like things to put in the pedestals to get through, and then we have two entrances to the other parts of this dungeon. So we can start with this one. Oh no. Clear path. Debris from an unknown or from around is blocking the path. It's uncertain if this was done deliberately or if it's nature that has caused this. Appreciate it for what it is. Sure. Um, there might be another way around. I'm not gonna try and do that right away. I thought maybe there I could see a room over there, but I think it's just more boundary rocks. Yeah, one thing I really wanted to do was use the use my ferocious potion or whatever to fight Valker if I was gonna fight like a boss, but I should have known that you'd fight them on their territory in their the realm, the edge. 
potent signet. Is that a crafting item? Potent signet. This smooth sculpt is made of one polished piece of shimmering crystal. When held at certain angles, parts of it becomes translucent. Or translucent. When you look through these parts, everything you see seems better somehow. Express potential. Use it with a well-made item to add a quality that improves its characteristics. Whoa. That is cool. Never seen that before. So we could like make our swords stronger or any of our well-made items. That is super cool. So I think anything with sigil slots is well made. I wonder what it would do on the elemental rods. I'd probably put an armor or a sword here. I wonder if the mask can get something. Oh, the shield's an option too. Most likely. That sounds like it'll be really fun. I was just hiding in a little rock like that. Who would have guessed? Okay, it looks like we can get back here from around this room, which I think we can get to. Oh, never mind. Does not connect. Metallic speed scroll. Honestly, I think I have enough of these metallic speed scrolls that I can get rid of that staff that I can use to open doors. We're like nearing like the probably the end of this the game here because that's what metallic speech does. I believe. Yeah, unlock a nearby door. We have five of those now. Okay, so we haven't been through there yet. I wonder if these rocks would break that. I can... them to show up over there. Okay, I am failing at that. Let's keep exploring this to see if there are other ways. Oh, yeah, you can just walk around. <laughs> okay. I'm not seeing anything here. I don't have to deal with these things are. I think this is just like for show. I don't want to go in there because it gets you wet. This room does nothing. So the only other place is where those rocks fell. And of course we can go back around the other way. Was another uh, path. Well, let's see if we can get through these rocks. I don't remember how this one works. Clean it up. We're encumbered because we picked up that falx. Uh, I'll use some spark here, see if we can get through. Mm. Yeah, I'll use a little more. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, we just got baited so hard. The only like treasure in this whole side was that signet thing, and that signet thing was awesome. But it was like right, right there and like available, and then there was like all these other paths with nothing of value. Well played, game. Well played.
Oh, dark down here. This gives us piercing roots. I was hoping this would do something that would like help light up the the dungeon. It looks like some kind of fire flower. Okay, I think the piercing roots get us through that barrier. That's a big rat to be hiding in one of those things. I think they're just dropping pelts. Sturdy boots, practical. Those are probably better than the boots I have. Yeah, mine are worn. I'll just go ahead and drop my boots. It's actually, it's huge. These are twice as efficient. If we bring back a dire rat thing, we can get boots made out of them potentially. I think you have to bring them to like a tailor specifically though. As long as I'm uncovered or encumbered, I may as well carry some of these. Doesn't harm us anymore to be further encumbered, I don't think. Well made dagger. Probably trades for more than the pelt. I'm gonna drop a pelt. I'm gonna leave one slot open in my inventory just in case things get weird. I'm trying to like pick something up with no slots in my inventory. Oh my gosh, another potent signet. I can't wait to try that out. We could probably mess with that at the campfire outside. Quarterstaff. That is hilarious. The dire rat ran right into the the rocks there. Uh, well made. Two sigil slots. Um, it's ancient, which is a negative. Cannot be parried, force back. I think you can um, repost with these two. Quarterstaff would be a cool item to main. I bet you there's a background that starts with those. Actually, how many slots does this take? That'll be good for trading as well. Well, we have, I think we have like a ton of weapons and armors for trading. The problem is that the smith doesn't have enough stuff to trade back for him. It's like a mirror of what we saw on the other side there. Hey. Oops. I think we want the piercing roots. Staff of Yendor here. Channel the uh, piercing root plant. Okay, we got one of the figurines. A rusty lock. Uh, yeah, I'll try to pick it. Cumbered. Makes a penalty there. Let's, we can probably just go around here and look at the other side. Oops. Break through the rocks over there. The 
same thing here. Get our piercing roots to channel with the stat. Oops. A rock there with a clan shield in it. This thing's beat up. Drop that. Um, no, I don't see anything over here. So I think we have to get through that lock. I wonder if I can open that up with my metallic speech stuff. Oh, I could probably open up the other thing that this these figurines open up with that. Let's see. Nope. Our odds here are terrible with the encumbered. Okay, this helps. That helps a lot. Alright, like a 1 in 6 chance or something. What I could do is... I drop a bunch of stuff and then pick it up later. Okay, I'm not encumbered anymore. I should have done it to start with. So I think this is our last chance to pick this lock. It doesn't have the inspired thing anymore. You've tried picking this lock multiple times. Okay. And normally those have alternate ways to get it, get into them. Oh, maybe the the door that the figurines open leads over there. But then where's the other figurine? I was kind of wondering if there was like a nook here that I was missing, like this one. Oh, like the these. Maybe there's a figurine in one of these. Warriors draft or draft. Not there. Do not know where the other figurine is. Oh. I was say I'm curious if that gets removed when I do this awakened thing. Nope. Not that at least. Here's one figurine. What about my open door staff? Hmm. Metallic speech scroll? It says unlock a nearby door. 
The authoritative words described in the scroll are an impression of a jangling set of keys. Maybe I can use that on the other door, actually. It seems like that's more likely to work on an actual locked door than a magic door. Which is the inverse of the thing I was just using, which felt like it should only work on a magic door and not a actually locked one. Did I look in here yet? Yo. Some spark respawns. I was able to see passive for a second there. There's a stair. Okay, what about metallic speech? Nice. Okay. Now what? Oh, those are turrets. Oh, I was crouched. I was wondering why I was moving so slow in that last area. This is most definitely going to open this door and activate the turrets. This looks like the big treasure room. I think some of these tiles are like probably going to activate these other turrets. They look like pressure plate tiles. Uh, okay, so let's see what's over here first. Okay, so this is just on the other side of this. I have no idea where the other thing for that was. Wait. Oh. I was like, where's the exit? It was over here. I was just reminded, remember last episode when I was so confused in that navigating that dungeon? There was a stair where I went down and came down the stair, like what just happened now. And then if I went immediately back up, it took me to a different area. And that was the only way into the one area I was trying to get to the whole time. And I kept avoiding it because I knew the other place um, came from somewhere else. So <laughs> I don't know if that was like a glitch or completely intended, but it made for some really interesting, uh, I guess you could say emerging gameplay. Crap's chest. I'll try to disarm it, but we are encumbered. Be rewarded. Another trap's chest. Oh, I'm still warded. I am. Nice. Um, I want to get unencumbered before trying to open that sarcophagi, because usually those make you pass a strength test. Which I think encumbrance would harm. Yeah, no modifiers. I should get one for having the strong property. Um, I kind of want to get in here. Let's reroll.
Does this fail? No, it just lets us. Yeah, okay. What is it there? Um, a well-made legacy bow with unidentified qualities. Now that looks cool. And a well-made clan shield. I would love to do a range run of this too. Finding a good bow like this would be great. Remember we were trying to buy a bow like a long time ago to get to maybe do something like that, but I just couldn't like afford it. Oh, how things could have been different. So the silver key presumably opens this lock. Search. There we go. Oh wait, that turret's just on. A ring. It's a trading commodity. A tradable commodity. Yeah, I can't even speak commodity. Um, so is that dark stone ring? I think those can have properties sometimes. Um, trap chest. We'll try to disarm it. Fail. Which would gained? Um, is that a crafting material? I assume. I wanted to see the dark ring. Oh man, we had a nimbleness ring, extra agility, fortune test draws, cost one spark. I could have used that on the lock picking thing. I gotta remember I have this, that's really good. And this has a free redraw to the social diplomacy test. Is this the one that I just found? No, I probably just found this one with unidentified qualities. I don't remember having a ring this good. It's incredible. And it has stealth. This thing is nuts. Too bad I can't, uh, I couldn't put slots into that thing. Put sigils in it. Witchwood. A chip of special wood occasionally found in Obscurity Forest. The meringue found a way to fashion items out of it that seem stronger and sharper than any metal. Uh, you can use this material to forge items on a sigil forge. Oh. That's cool. Silver nugget. Uh oh. I'm not here. <laughs> Ignore my turret. Surprised I didn't see me on the way back there. A ruby? According to legend, rubies are tears shed by mercy when the earth was birthed. But there is also a body song that claims she simply sneezed once to bring them forth. Uh huh. Oh, we got some lockpicks back. Bet you that's a very high value item. Well, that was cool that bounced off that turret. I think that's a full explorer of this. I mean, we obviously missed something because I didn't get the last... Uh, what have you. Roly-poly figurine. There was like another one, but... We got to the other side of that door anyways, and I seem to have found most other stuff. How do we get out? Um, 
Um, it's to the right in this room. Feels like another dungeon where you it's better to do it early because you can find some really good equipment kind of like those mercy's tombs but it's also very dangerous because you because of valker definitely good to know for next time you might even be able to explore it while avoiding valker should camp at this thing. Hmm, I wonder how I use that uh, signet thing. Rotten eggs. I guess I don't have much to do here. We don't even know what time it is because we're underground and we can't see the sun. Yeah, I want to keep walking around so we can find more spark. A bunch just floating around. Eh, maybe that's it. Came with 60 spark. I went down to like 48 or something. We're back up to like 53, but not too bad. There might even be some more out here. What do you know? And I think that's enough for one session here today. So I'm gonna stop up here in case that spark respawns again. Unload. And is this the last like major thing we wanted to do? I think we might head to Haven and plan to make our adventure into the first valley. We've done like everything in this world. Look at look at this journey we've been through. Like we've left our mark here. It's actually wild. It's incredible how much we've done in this set, this like playthrough. But yeah, I think we're on to the first valley. So I think next we're gonna head to Haven. Just kind of a long journey. I might take the Serpent Trail. I have one more Serpent Sphere to basically fast travel there. Just because I'm encumbered, it's going to be kind of annoying to get through. Oh, I'm fatigued. I should have rested inside. i do that real quick. Actually, can I just rest out here? No, because it's cold. Or I can light a fire. I guess I'm exposed out here. I think I might have been exposed in there. Game saved. Yeah, we're gonna go go to Haven, make some preparations, and it's on to the first valley, which I am terrified of because we apparently cannot heal on there. Um, but we'll uh, bring some preparations, hopefully mitigate that. I might end up just using a lot of invisibility potions because <laughs> I think we have a lot at this stage in the game. We're gonna have to, to refamiliarize ourselves with our resources here. Yeah, I'm gonna use a ton of invisibility potions and just try to like Avoid all combat. I'm excited. But yeah, that'll be, uh, we'll start that next time. Uh, this was a really fun area. Finally got to see what Valkyr was all about. And had a, a pretty cool dungeon in there. Uh, I love these big dungeons like that. That was a lot of fun. But yeah, we'll leave this here for now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'll remind everybody that I have some links in the description below. Uh, if you might want to check out, you can find my Patreon if you want to show some support. 
You can find the Discord community. You can find other social links and stuff like that. So feel free to check all that out. But for now, I am out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Take it easy, everyone.